<laughs> hey everybody, welcome back to Wednesday in the Word, we'll call it. I don't know. Um, hopefully everybody's having a good day today. Um, the weather's getting colder. Uh, I love it. I'm so excited. Sweatpants and sweatshirts and blankets. Favorite season. Very excited about that. We're just going to give people a couple minutes to get on. Are you excited about the colder weather? Mm, I'm thrilled. <laughs> It's not actually his favorite, um, but it is fine. I love it. It's been a little chilly in the mornings. <laughs> I just don't like that it gets dark so early. That's the only piece that I don't enjoy. But other than that, I, I'm always hot, so it's great for me. Um, let's see what time it is. Just give people... Okay, good. Um, I think we're good to start, and uh, we'll just pass it over. Okay. All right, so um, we've been looking at the word peace, right? In the last couple of weeks, we looked at peace in Luke, and that was what? Proclamation, mm -hmm. God's proclamation of peace to the world. And then in John, and John was Jesus, who is the peace of God, and his words of peace to us. I wasn't ready for a pop quiz. Well, and then, uh, so this week we're going to look at peace with God. I have four little points, and um, the first two kind of just going to go through quickly. The last two is the ones we want to sort of focus on, um, but it's the world does not know peace. Uh, peace with God comes through Jesus, and then a life lived in peace with God, and then peace completed. So, uh, we'll start in Romans chapter 3. And we'll read verse 17 and 18. And it says, The way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now this is the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Rome. And he's actually quoting the Old Testament here. Um, <clears throat> but essentially what he's saying is that the world can't know peace because it doesn't know God. And peace, lasting, true peace comes from God. And if they don't know God, they don't know peace. And the problem is really sin. Sin is a barrier between us and God. And so sin creates a lot of problems in our lives, in our world, and uh, sin ruins peace, right? It goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. There was peace, and then sin came in. What happened? It ruined everything. Um, so, you know, this is, of course, true of the unbeliever. It can also be true of the believer, not the part about um, being in the world, but the idea of sin being a barrier between us and God. And we'll talk more about that in a minute, but um, just that idea that, um, uh, yeah, the world really can't know peace because it doesn't know God. So, uh, point number two, we're going to find in Romans chapter 5, <clears throat> and we're going to read verse 1, and it says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. Mm. Right? And so, of course, this is the solution to the problem. Uh, again, Paul writing, and he's continuing on now. And um, those who put their faith in the Lord Jesus, right, we have peace with God because peace with God comes through the Lord Jesus, right? He's the one that came and did the work on the cross of Calvary, which bought our peace, right? Um, <clears throat> and so, um, yeah, for those who are in the world, first problem is salvation, which is um, faith in God through the Lord Jesus Christ and the work that he's done. That brings peace with God. That's where we need to start, right? Is peace between us and God. The sin problem taken away. Um, again, also, um, speaking of the Lord Jesus and his work as mediator, which is a go-between, right? That's also true for the believer because, of course, sin, just because we get saved doesn't mean sin goes away. And we still sin, so we still need the Lord Jesus to do that restoration work, not salvation work, but restoration work. And Scripture tells us that that's what he does for the believer. He is there to uh, go between us and the Father and, and restore us to the Father. And um, 1 John 1, 9 mm -hmm. says, if we are faithful, 
uh, we confess, if we our, confess sins. our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. Um, so, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sorry, I had Thank to finish. You. That's all right. Can't be happy so, with the um, <laughs> And then verse 2 there, you know, it just says, uh, through whom we have access, through whom, speaking of the Lord Jesus, we have access by faith into this grace. And uh, just a simple way of thinking of grace is the goodness of God. And the goodness of God is that he wants restored relationship. He wants peace between us and himself. And so that's why he sent the Lord Jesus in the first place, right? And so, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, through the Lord Jesus, we have access into all of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, point number three, we're going to find in Romans chapter 8. And these are the two I want to talk a little bit more about, which... Somehow I always end up talking more than I think I was going to on these <laughs> points. But All right, Romans chapter 8, and we're going to start in verse 5. And it says, uh, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is at enmity, against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Uh, so then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Okay, so let me just uh, condense this down. Basically, what Paul is writing, again, to the church in Rome, continuing on. Now that we're believers, and we've had that sin problem taken away, now we have to, we have a life to live. We're still left here to live a life, right? God just doesn't take us right away. So, he says, here's the deal. If you want to have life and peace, and he's talking about uh, good spiritual life and peace, spiritual peace, um, we need to be spiritually minded, right? The carnal minded basically means self-focused, flesh-focused, me, I. Spiritually minded is God-focused, uh, his will, his works, his ways, obedient to the Holy Spirit and what he tells us to do. Uh, so those are your, kind of your two options as a believer in the Lord Jesus, um, is we can either be carnally minded and so focused on ourselves and what we want, or we can be spiritually minded and focused on God and what he wants. And so depending on which one of those we follow depends on how much peace we have in our lives and how much, yeah, well, mm -hmm. peaceful life we live day to day, um, you know, and we, God gives us that option. So if we you know, want to do what we want to do, and we don't have much peace, well, we shouldn't be too surprised. Mm. Um, but hopefully, as believers, we want to follow God, and we want to do what He wants us to do, and, um, yeah, have our minds and thoughts set on Him. And, of course, that requires knowing His Word, right? And because uh, there's a lot in Scripture that will help us to know what God would have us to do. And then, of course, the believer has the Holy Spirit, also, and uh, there's also the conscience that God has given us. There's lots there that God has given us to kind of direct us the way that he would have us mm -hmm. to go, right? And so then that will bring peace in our lives and peace with God, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so then the last little point I wanted to make was peace completed. And that we're going to go to First Thessalonians. And it's the very end of the book, chapter 5, <clears throat> and uh, 23 and 24, says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who, is, uh, he who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Mm -hmm. um, now this again is the Apostle Paul. He's writing to a different church mm -hmm. at this point, and he's closing out his little letter to them. And he says, now that the God of peace, right? That's what we're talking about. The God of peace himself will sanctify you completely. In other words, uh, 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 completely make you holy. And um, it's interesting that he uses these three words here, spirit, soul, and body, which are the three parts of who we are as human beings. And when you think about what we just talked about, the spirit <clears throat> is... Uh, I'm going to use the sanctified word, but um, the spirit is, um, yeah, sanctified, I'm probably explain it, is 
set apart to him, made holy. But that happens when we get saved, when we trust in the Lord Jesus. First thing we do is receive the Holy Spirit, right? So then the second part is the soul. That's your mind, your will, emotions, your thoughts. And that's what we sort of just talked about in Romans chapter 8. That's what God wants. He is working out in us now. And we have a little bit of part to play in that because it's sort of our responsibility where, where our mind is, right? Um, and then the last part is our body. And uh, our bodies, we're still stuck with these bodies. But someday, when we go to see the Lord Jesus, as we was talking about uh, the coming of the Lord Jesus, when he receives us to himself, then he's going to give us new bodies, sinless bodies. And so then you'll have the whole complete human will be sanctified, set apart, or holy. Uh, to God. And what I liked about this verse is that it's God who does it, right? Mm. So I don't have to worry about failing in the completing of my whole becoming holy and my perfection uh, according to what the Lord uh, would have us to be. Because he started it the day he saved you and he's going to finish it. Now we have a little bit to play here in the middle uh, with our mind and where our thoughts are. But we don't have to worry about failing. That's the part I really am encouraged by. Uh, because God is going to complete that someday. Mm. Um, so, uh, just some thoughts on uh, peace with God. And I hope that that's an encouragement and a blessing to you. Mm -hmm. And then next week we'll uh, uh, continue on with some more. I think we're going to look at uh, personal peace um, next week. And some verses... Uh, probably a little more on how that's going to work out uh, in our lives to go along with that idea of our our mind and our focus type thing. So awesome! Uh, thanks everybody for coming. I get questions about can I share this? Yes, you can share the video. Feel free, um, and feel free to comment if you have questions about something Richard taught. Feel free to either write them below or send me a message, and we can answer them. Um, but yeah, feel free to share. Thank you for coming every week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Okay. Have a great night. Bye guys.